Hey guys, welcome back to My Colourful Country Life. Today I am adding to our beginner series of videos by delving into a fundamental technique that can take your colouring to the next level, and that is layering. So before we dive in, let me first clarify the difference between what I mean when I say blending and also when I say layering. So in my blending techniques for a beginner colorist video, which I will link up above, I discussed in detail the art of blending from dark to light to achieve a seamless transition between your colors. So when I say blending, I simply mean two colors next to each other, which have been merged together through a transition of sorts like overlapping. Now layering is different. Layering is also a form of blending, but it's all about building up your colors on top of each other with multiple light layers usually progressing from lighter to darker shades. Now, this technique is fantastic for creating depth, highlights, and textures, all those things that might be challenging to achieve with a straightforward blend. So, and you can also layer the same color on top of itself to build up vibrancy too. Usually you only need to do this with firmer pencils. Uh, I will do a demonstration with you all very shortly, showing you the difference between um, blending and layering and the difference it can make using a particular color combination. Now, while this video is not about the difference between oil and wax-based pencils, I did think it would be pertinent to touch on the subject. So while it's true that oil-based pencils uh, excel at layering due to their firmness and their degree of opacity, I personally believe that every pencil brand can be used for both blending and layering. Uh, however, some will perform better layering whilst others will perform better when blending. The key is just to find out what works best for you personally. So some people prefer layering for the control it offers as well as the realism, while others favor blending for its efficiency. And some people don't have much choice in the technique that they use due to health reasons. It's just all about personal preference and comfort. So why do I choose to layer my colors from light to dark in certain situations? This is actually a question I get asked quite a lot um, and what I'm going to demonstrate for you all today as well. So I find layering provides me with precise control over the amount of pigment I'm applying to my page and this helps to achieve specific effects on different elements. So it's all about creating depth, highlights and textures. Most elements you're coloring in reality, in real life, they do have variations in color, in highlights and shadows. So they're not just one color. So by layering, you're going to create a more realistic appearance. Um, although we don't all color for realism, I don't personally myself. It's just a technique you can use that can assist in achieving that look if that's what you would like to go for. Um, you'll notice Chris Cheng uses a lot of layers with her Prismacolor pencils in her work and Chris excels in hyper-realism. Her work is fantastic. Uh, you can also use layering to create brand new colors as well um, or to assist with the transition between colors too. Okay, with all that information out of the way, let's start to put it into practice. You'll have noticed Alien Worlds has been sitting here throughout this video. So I wanted to show you this page because the entire robot here was colored by using a layering technique where the rest of the page was actually colored with a straight blend. Now, to illustrate the impact of layering, I want to do a demonstration with you all. And we're going to explore how the same color combination can produce vastly different results when layered instead of blended. So this demonstration is hopefully going to shed some light on the power of layering and why it is a valuable technique to use. So I'm going to use Phantom Morphia for today's demonstration. Okay, so I think what we're going to do first is use the layering technique on a section of our robot dragon's tail. And then we're going to go back in and color another section with a straight blend. So colors we're going to be using today are uh, PC1011 Deco Yellow, uh, Artichoke PC1098, PC945, which is Sienna Brown, and PC1099, which is Espresso. And lastly, we're also going to be finishing off with PC914 Cream. So that's our color combo for today, and we're going to use that for blending and then for layering. Nope, we're going to use it for layering and then for blending. Layering first, Karen. Um, so 
before we start coloring, there are so many different color combinations you can use for gold, depending on the final effect you're going for. So you may want a muted gold, a brighter gold, a tarnished gold, an antique gold, so many different choices. Um, but you can also use the same color combo with different layers to create some of those different types of gold. So if you look closely at any gold item, you're going to notice a few different tones. You can find different shades of yellow, brown, red, even green. And utilizing these different shades in your color combo will help you to achieve a more realistic effect. So let's start layering. We're first going to apply a very light layer of Deco Yellow PC1011. And let me first zoom you all in because this step can be very hard to see on camera. Let's hopefully it focuses. Okay, I think we might work on this scale here. So you want to use light pressure for your layers. Um, and we're going to keep adding layers until we get the final result that we want. So when you're placing your base color down, just be mindful of where you want your highlight to be um, and what tone you want the highlight to be. And what I mean by this is, do you want the highlight to be a brighter yellow or do you want it to be more of a uh, brilliant white? Because I want my highlight to be quite light, I'm going to use barely any pressure in the area that I want the highlight to be. Um, and just to interrupt <laughs> with a quick curvy tip, these lines that he's drawn here, all these lines here, they represent shadows. So that area of the element is going to be darker and where there are no lines, this is where the light is hitting. So it's going to be our brighter area. This is going to be our highlight area. And also the overhang here from the scale above is likely casting some shadow too. Uh, but lights and shadows is a whole other video. So let's go in and put our base color down. I think I'm going to leave this area here as a highlight. So this is sort of an underside of the scale if you think of it as sort of a rounded object so I'm not pressing firm at all I'd say I'm pressing a medium pressure on the darker areas and then I'm just bringing it down to really soft if you're unsure about how hard your pressure is you can or you're best off starting off lighter and you can always add in more layers. So I'm just leaving a little gap there. That's going to be our highlight in the center. Okay, and that is our first color, the Deco Yellow. Once we have our base down, we're going to go in with our next lightest color, which is Artichoke PC1098. And we're also going to be using light pressure. Now, we don't want to cover the Deco Yellow completely, so just about three quarters of the way down, so you still see some Deco Yellow peeking out of the bottom, and if we need to add in more, we can do so later as well. So I am going a tiny bit harder in the shadow area, so where Kirby has put these lines, but it's still sort of a medium pressure. And now my pressure is going to get really light in these highlight areas. Try not to cover it all completely. And remember, we are layering, so we can always add more color in if we need to. You can always add in color. It's a lot harder to take it away. So our next color is Sienna Brown PC945 and we're going to use light pressure again and we're going to go about halfway down the element so we still see some artichoke and some deco yellow peeking out the end. I 
I'm using light pressure. I don't want to press too hard with this colour, otherwise it'll turn out a little bit too brown for my liking. Just softening those edges up so we don't have a harsh line there. Next up we're going to add in Espresso PC1099. Now this is going to be our shadow colour and I'm going to add this in sparingly um, because I'm looking for a more light gold palette. Um, you can go back in and add more layers if you want to to deepen that shadow but I'm just going to go in a little bit lightly. Okay, so under the scale there, where the scale will overlap, over Kirby's shadow lines that he's given us. Here we have a bit of an overlap as well. And I think it's also on the underside of the, of the scale, of the round object. Here would be in the shadow as well. So you can see I'm very lightly adding this in. And maybe a little bit over here. As you can see, I just keep going over it until I build up as much of this shadow colour that I want. And making sure I don't have any harsh lines while I'm doing it. Alright, now we have our first layer down of all of our colours. Um, you can go back in and build up your layers as you feel necessary until you get the desired result. So just have a look at um, your area and see if it needs anything extra. In my opinion, it does. This needs a little bit more artichoke. So I'm going to go and add some more artichoke. And then I'll have another look and see if it needs any more deco yellow. And just I'm going to play around with it for a little bit before I go in and burnish it. Because once you've burnished it, it's really hard to work with anymore. Unless you add maybe a workable fixative over the top. So let's go in and add in some more artichoke, which is PC1098. Now, can you see the difference going back over with another layer of artichoke is making? So this was really pale and this is adding a little bit more warmth to the gold. Okay, and I think I will add just a touch more deco yellow. So PC1011. Just 
just to make that transition to the highlight a little bit easier. Don't press too hard, otherwise you'll get a very yellow tone. Now once I'm happy with the way it looks, I will go in and burnish the element. Now, so far we have used Deco Yellow as our lightest color. Um, I could go in and burnish with Deco Yellow and then use some white on the highlight to make it stand out, but this is gonna give me a really bright yellow gold. And I don't want a bright gold, I want a softer, more muted look. So I'm actually gonna burnish with cream instead, which is PC914. Okay, so that's the look we get from layering. Now let me show you what this would look like if I did my usual straight blend instead. And this should give you a good idea of why I change up my method, my technique occasionally. Um, so with a straight blend, I do go from dark to light and you can see the full technique in my blending video. But basically these colors are gonna be side by side with a slight overlap as opposed to being colored uh, directly on top of each other as we have just done with layering. So we're both basically going to be working in reverse to the first method I just demonstrated. So which scale should I use here? Should I use one of the, I'll use this one because it's right next to it. It does have a little bit more shadow uh, lines on it, but um, I'll try and do it similar to this one here. So first we're going to go in with our espresso. So this is our darkest color, our shadow color, PC1099. So we are going to use this sparingly, but when I do my blends, which is what I'm demonstrating now, um, and what you'll have seen in my blending video, I do use hard pressure. So I burnish as I go. So hard pressure and then I taper off. So we're just adding in a little bit of this now. Over here where the scale would overlap. Now this is our lightest area, so this is where most of our highlight will be. So I'm not going to add in any shadow colors over here because we don't really have any shadow. Okay. So following it up with Sienna Brown PC945 and we're going to color maybe a quarter of the way in. So straight blends, we're burnishing and bringing it out. You should already be able to see the difference from the last color combo. Lucky I did the scale next week. I can, um, I'm going to have to finish the page doing one, then the other, one, then the other, the whole way to make it match. Okay, so I think we can add in our artichoke now. 
So PC1098 artichoke. Now this one, we're going to go halfway down. Got to leave space for our deco yellow and our cream colors. Just soften that edge up a little bit. Don't want any harsh lines. Now we can go in with our Deco Yellow PC1011 and if you've watched my blend in video you'll know that I use hard pressure tapering it off to light and then to get a nice seamless blend I overlap where I've had the light pressure so we have a burnished section and a non-burnished burnished section <laughs> that's hard to say of each color so we do overlap that color and then bring it out. Okay, we're leaving a little gap there for our highlight colour. And our highlight colour is Cream PC914. Just going to go and burnish the rest of the area. Okay, now you should be able to see the difference here. I will zoom you guys in a little bit further now that we finish colouring. One second. Hopefully you guys can notice the differences. Um, it is a small area, so if you're doing that in a large area, I should have shown you on one of the um, dragon wings or something, because in a large area, there is a vast difference. Um, and I'm not saying that one method is better than the other. I'm just showing you the different results you can get. And I personally don't layer often. I am a proud smoosher of color onto paper. I love quick and easy, but layering does produce some wonderful effects. Um, one time I will always layer is with skin. So if I just grab a book to show you for an example, and I will zoom you guys back out for this one. Okay, so this is Hannah Carlson's Seasons. I'm going to need to zoom you back out further. One second. Okay. So on this page, I've layered not just the skin, but also the leaves. And I do recommend always layering skin if you're working with colored pencils. Unless you want a more stylized or a fantasy effect. And I will do a tutorial about skin as an addition to my spotlight series on color later down the track. 
Uh, but real skin can vary greatly in color, tone and texture. So by layering, you are able to produce a more realistic skin tone by adding in all the little nuances. So using a reference photo can help with adding those colors in as well. Now the leaves here, I have layered because I wanted a little bit more of a muted tone. So Along with the greens, there's some burnt ochre, there's some sepia, I think there's some espresso, uh, which added to create this final look of the leaf. Now, if you want a realistic looking autumnal leaf, layering is a great way to achieve that look as well. So as a leaf dies off, it can take on red, orange, brown, sometimes even purplish hues. So these are colors you can add in while you're layering to create that look. So a few different tones there that you can play with. Now, while I am showing you some examples, let me grab my Rooms of Wonder so I can show you some more layering with different colours. So, if I find my Beehive page, one second. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. So, you can see by looking at the flowers, uh, where I've added a different tone. So my pink flowers here have some yellow and orange in it. Uh, my purple flowers have some blue and even a little bit of pink. And the blue, uh, the blue flowers here have some pink tones. Uh, the yellow ones have some reddish tones and some browns. So this is a subtle way of mixing colors with layering. Uh, if you want to see bolder examples of this, a perfect person to look at is Rita Berman. She is an amazing colorist as well as an artist, and she mixes her tones up a lot in her coloring and uh, puts all sorts of different colors together. So she is a good person to look up um, if you want to see layering with multiple different uh, tones. So actually, let me get out some Rita Berman books to show you even more examples of this. Now, as I've mentioned before, I do prefer to use straight blends the majority of the time. So you will find my layering work is more subtle. Um, other uh, colorists, it'll stand out a little bit more, be a bit more obvious. Um, but for my coloring style, it tends to be a little bit more subtle. So if I show you this background here in Europa, um, this has got greens, blues, purples, and pinks, and they're all layered together. This is a color along up on the channel as well. Um, even these leaves here are layered with blues, greens, and browns. Um, so this is some subtle layering of different colors that I've got here. And I have another background example here from Rita Berman's Asia book. This one here has pinks, yellows, oranges, uh, cream. So a few different different colors all laid on this one as well. So both of these backgrounds are different takes on the bokeh effect. Uh, that's one type of background that you just can't do effectively, in my opinion, of course, without layering. Um, okay, so that is how and why I sometimes change up my coloring style to layer for particular elements. I hope this has answered everyone's questions and I hope it shed some light on this technique for you guys as well and shown you how you can utilize it on your coloring pages. Um, before I wrap things up, I just want to remind you that there is no one size fits all approach to coloring, whether you prefer blending or layering, it's all about finding what works best for you and what look you want to achieve in your artwork. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more tips, tutorials, and coloring adventures. Uh, feel free to leave any questions or suggestions in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you all. Thank you so much for joining me today and until next time, happy coloring. Bye for now.